Hey everybody, it's Lee. How you doing? Uh, I just thought I would do a quick scope while I'm walking over the usual blah blah blah. You can read my work at thepopulist.us. Also, I host a show called Fault Lines with Nixon and Stranahan that is on Radio Sputnik five days a week. Also, Citizen Journalism School. Also, retweet this puppy. So I just wanted to do this uh, briefly because uh, Alex Jones had to apologize and retract. This is, it's interesting because it's the second time Alex has had to apologize and retract uh, in the past few weeks. He also had to do it in the Pizzagate thing, something I never had to do because I was never wrong on that story. And you're definitely not going to hear me apologize or retract on the stuff that I did, the reporting that I did on Twin Falls and Chobani, because I never got anything wrong. Uh, the mistake that Alex made, and it wasn't Alex personally, but the mistake that InfoWars made was not that they didn't do some solid reporting on it, that they had some headlines that were inaccurate. So there was a sexual assault. Uh, the parents of the girl who was sexually assaulted certainly call it rape and say that there was penetration and say that they were, were told that. I've talked to them multiple, multiple times and they've confirmed that for me. Uh, it wasn't charged as rape, but okay. Uh, it was not teenagers who did it, it was the younger kids, and the people who did the assault had nothing to do directly with Chobani whatsoever. They had nothing to do. They didn't, their parents didn't work there. They had nothing to do with it. Furthermore, the refugee resettlement program predates Chobani's involvement. So how does Chobani factor into it? And the way it factors into it, and what I reported is very clear, and I don't have to apologize it because I'm completely right. Let's go over it. Number one, the family of the girl who's the victim of that sexual assault were attacked and lied about by members of the city council. Okay? In fact, Greg Lanting, who's the person who did the attacking, who's subsequently apologized for it and admitted that he lied about it, admitted that he was wrong about the parents in attacking them. Greg Lanting was there at the ribbon cutting ceremony for Chobani. So what does that have to do with anything? Well, let me add one other fact too. The U.S. attorney in the case, not forgive me, the U.S. attorney not in the case, but the U.S. attorney for the state of Idaho came out and after initial reports came out and literally threatened people, said there might be legal consequences for getting facts wrong about the story. Well, uh, that's a chilling effect. And when people in the city council come out and attack citizens for talking about the story, it bothers me. Now, why would Greg Lanting do that? Why would the city council do that? And the answer has to do with the fact, in my opinion, it's pretty clear to me that the city council did not want to get on the bad side of Hamdi Yulakaya, the CEO of Chobani, who is a major advocate for the refugee program in the United States. And by the way, Hamdi Yulakaya is not, as far as I know, a U.S. citizen. Furthermore, when uh, we asked Hamdi Yulakaya, when I was at Breitbart, on the record, we called Chobani and said, is Hamdi Yulakaya a U.S. citizen? Their response was, no comment. I'm going to say that again. The response was, no comment. As far as I can tell, Hamdi Yulakaya is still a Turkish citizen who managed to get about, I'm not looking at my notes, but I believe a million dollar SBA loan to start Chobani. Furthermore, it's 100% clear that Chobani has deep political connections, including some Republicans, but also people like Chuck Schumer, the Clintons. He's spoken at the Clinton Global Foundation. Hillary Clinton has re retweeted stories about Chobani repeatedly, three or four different tweets about them. And they go along with Hillary Clinton talking points. So here's what I'm saying, and this is why I said this relates to globalism. Hamdi Ulkaya is a globalist, right? He's somebody who was able to shop deals, hook up with the government, and get breaks that frankly you couldn't get if you wanted to start a business. Does that make sense? And because of that, Republicans and Democrats alike for different reasons, want to get on Hamdi Yulakaya's good side. So they're not going to come out and be critical 
of the refugee program because they know he's a major advocate for it. So I don't have anything to apologize for. My whole point was when I looked at the story and other people had got the reporting wrong, they said that the, the people who did the assault were Syrians. No, they weren't Syrians. By the way, it's completely irrelevant. They said that they were older. They're not kind of relevant, but I never reported that. And I never said Chobani brought those kids in or brought their families in. What I did say is that there's a political atmosphere where the little guy, regular citizens, are getting attacked by business leaders and city officials, and I don't like it. You dig? I don't like it. I am a populist. I do stand up for the people, right? And I understand that when you're trying to report a story like this, there's going to be a little room for slop, right? That doesn't mean you should get facts wrong, and it doesn't mean anybody should have been spreading rumors that weren't true, but guess what? What I pointed out was, remember the Ferguson, remember the Black Lives Matter? How many falsehoods were spread about the Michael Brown case? How many? Hands up, don't shoot. How many was that spread? I didn't see anybody, I didn't see any U.S. attorney calling on those citizens to shut their mouths or face prosecution. Did you? You see the difference here? Because I do, and I wrote about it at the time. Now, I have more to say on the Twin Falls stuff. I have more to say on the Giovanni stuff. What I did was, in my reporting at Breitbart, was I tied it in before they shut the story down at Breitbart over threats from Giovanni, by the way. I've talked about this before. And it, and it wasn't because I got anything wrong. <laughs> I didn't get anything wrong. So, and I think there's a chilling effect when a company can shut down a story, don't you? Am I the only one who's bothered by that? Right? What I said was, and I didn't even try to accuse that, I didn't even say, well, Hamdi Ukai is a Muslim, and therefore, he's clearly a do globalist. He's a Davos guy. Right? He's more globalist than Muslim, to be honest with you. Because at the same time the Democrats were pushing the LGBT marriage agenda, he did a lesbian yogurt ad, and he did an ad attacking Russia for, and I reported this months ago, uh, attacking Russia for their stand on gay rights and stuff like that. So this is a guy who gets along to go along, and by the way, his company has received a pretty big break working in the school lunch program, and I've done stories about that as well. So, like I say, this is one of those situations where the media smeared me. In fact, the Daily Beast, when they attacked my reporting, actually went so far, the Daily Beast went so far as to attribute a quote to me that was not only nothing I said, but when you clicked on the link, it literally linked to another person's story. That is sucky journalism. But I didn't sue him. But that, and they, and they were forced to, after a couple of days, retract that. But I just want you to see the level of media dishonesty here. That's what it is. Now, if you're fine with a non-U.S. citizen being a major advocate for more refugees coming into the country, that's fine. That's your prerogative. I'm calling attention to it because I think it deserves to have attention called to it. And that's it. Like I say, I, I just don't... I get... This is the advantage. I always talk about this stuff. I talk about doing accurate journalism. This is why. Do you understand? So you, doing accurate journalism means you don't have to issue humiliating apologies. Right? It means I don't have to backtrack. It means I can sleep well at night and proudly stand up for the reporting that I've done. You're going to see there's more stories coming about this Giovanni thing soon. Not just from me, but from other media outlets who are trying to say there was something wrong with it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And if someone wants to answer me factually and tell me what facts I've got wrong, then the other thing that they do, somebody did this on Twitter yesterday, which is, they said, oh, I see, because he's foreign and because he's in favor of refugees, you say he's evil. You guys have listened to me now. Did you hear me say the word evil at any point? No, you didn't. What you heard me say is if you're okay with that, that's fine. You have a right to be okay with it. I think it's weird when foreign people are trotted out in front of the White House as Hamdi Yulikaya was 
to push for more immigration into this country. He's not an immigrant. He's not a he's he's not a U.S. citizen. This is a guy who's not a U.S. citizen. And by the way, it could be. He's a billionaire, apparently. And he could be. So that's it. So like I say, they can't dispute the facts. They try to mischaracterize what I said. And that's all they got. And it's pathetic. And that's it. But that's why I say this is not a story you're going to see me apologizing for at any time. I don't apologize for getting stories right. I don't apologize for doing accurate journalism. And I don't apologize just because leftists try to get me to. You dig? Don't do that. So anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Can't see any of the questions because it's bright out and I got to go to work. Love you guys.